welcome to Magathia Builder Worlds. This is a Burrows and Badgers Benfliot build. Yes, it is. I'm back out in the marsh and uh, the village in the marsh to add some more scenery to my Benfliot growing marsh. It's soon as it's going to be bigger than London, the capital city of, of that bottom end of, of Albion. But pff, hey, I'm having so much fun making it. It's, it's cool. Uh, and I want to be able to move my... Warbands of Luden campaign in the future with some new warbands, look out lads, uh, out into the marshes and the wilds of of Anglia and and, uh, and, and Saxnar and the like. Um, and it'll be really cool and playing different kinds of games. Games on ships, games around this kind of like the, these people who live out in the marshes and the, and, and the edge of uh, the wilds of Eastern Albion would be pretty cool. Did I show you this recently? I don't know if you've seen this. What do you think of that? Not bad, is it? It's one of those um, uh, gloom tide wrecky thing. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. From Iden F. Deep King from uh, uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma. And um, yeah, I just want to use it as a wreck. It's quite nice. I love the idea of. <sighs> I remember as a kid loads of, of wrecked barges and things on the, the shores of the River Crouch, uh, near the River Thames. Um, just wreck and die and all the rest of it. And I thought I could do something with this. It's going to be a great kind of location for a scenario for guys to hang out wherever else. Really, really cool bit of model, actually. I've uh, got to hand it to Workshop. It's nice. Converted the figurehead, mind you, into a figurehead of Tau Tartus, uh, the uh, god of war, uh, and uh, uh, added a large fleur de lis on the stern from Whitby, this thing, up the, up the, the coast. But yeah, pretty good. There is no video for this being made. Uh, if you think I should make a video for something like this, I'm quite happy to get another one. Um, leave the comments down below. Anyway, that's not what I'm doing today. Today I am building a piece of scenery for Ben Fliot that I've been thinking about for a little while. The problem with Burrows and Badgers for me is, is oh, it's not a problem, um, but the interesting thing for Burrows and Badgers for me is, is how different gamers around the place view um, the world that b and B's in. I, some ways I get kind of frustrated because Michael Lovejoy is a one man band ably supported by Joe, right, so a two person band um, and so and it's his world and he's creating stuff and I love creating stuff as well but I kind of like to see b and as a bit of a sandbox for me, I'm in this position to make this brilliant kind of like set of locations myself. I'm quite happy with that, it means I don't have to follow what Michael's doing, I can do my own thing. Um, I think he and I share a similar kind of vision of what the world of Burrows and Badgers is about, which is actually a bit grim. Some people make Burrows and Badgers a bit kind of twee. They like their scenery their, to be kind of like, you know, scaled with it and nice. And in some cases, some people who aren't, you know, scenery makers, they want to just get buy stuff and stick it on the table, have gone to uh, local garden centres or aquarium shops and they have found kind of houses in toadstools or tree stumps, that kind of thing. Um, and I don't see the world of B&B like that. I love this kind of like houses and buildings side of things um i also think it's kind of dark it's not a twee setting at all just because it's it's badgers and and hares and that kind of thing it's a pretty brutal world um one of the things that is brutal about it is the the uh, the idea of slavery which is never nice uh, another brutal thing is when you start digging down into what some of these guys are eating um especially the carnivores and there's often questions about what do they eat and um, what do they eat and are they likely to eat some of the other characters you know when they're dead and that's certainly the kind of thing and i think that's a possibility as well um and uh, then if you really start digging deep into some of the kind of like thought processes as to how this world will work it gets a bit weird to be quite honest I'm not going into that now, um, but I do want a few darker, seedier kind of elements uh, for some of the locations in my games. And I thought what would be cool would be to have a kind of fighting pit type arena in Benfliot. Um, you know, the kind of thing that you see in the start of uh, the original Conan, the Barbarian movie. Two snakes like this, um, where uh, Conan is in this little fighting pit and it's got spikes and weapons and dead bodies and kind of like, you know, that kind of thing. So I like the idea of having this, this fighting pit in, in the village uh, where a gladiators come to fight and it's a big deal. It's one of the only kind of sources of entertainment uh, in a place like Benfliot, apart from going to the Red Barrow Inn and other inns that are in the village. Um, so uh, I want to build it um, to suit that and to make that. It's going to be 
pretty much all wood. I'm going to make it mostly from balsa wood. I want it to have kind of like a, be on a little island in the marsh um, where uh, there's no solid floor. It's kind of a marshy, islandy kind of thing where the water kind of like seeps up. So you could be having a fight, uh, watching a fight, and the tide starts to ride, which rise, which adds a kind of like a certain uh, something to the fight. Uh, added desperation, especially if the gladiators can't swim or are heavily armoured or that kind of thing. So the sides then need to be able to have water get through it. And then it's going to need raised platforms around the outside for the uh, viewing public to stand on and be safe from the water and for the combat that's going on down below. I have no sketches for this. This one is completely in my mind, which is a bit odd. So sorry, there's nothing for me to point at here. See? Or over here. Again. Nothing, zip. This one um, is just going to evolve as we go. Um, I'm probably going to get all hexagonal again, like I just did for the lighthouse, because that kind of works, I like that. But there's going to be involving uh, bolts of wood, a bit of XPS foam to make the island out of, uh, filler to make the water, and um, well, that's mostly going to be it. I'm going to see how this goes. So uh, hold on to your seats. We are going to build a fighting pit for the marsh village of Benfield down here oh yeah i'm gonna need some stuff first time uh right let's start with hardboard and xps phone we're gonna go from there okay so following the conversation recently about what the yanks call hardboard i can't remember any of those names they're all on that uh um video <laughs> i did a little while ago but here we are start with our piece of hardboard and we're gonna need some this is 10 millimeter xps foam that's probably gonna be enough i'm gonna cut a shape out of that Get out of the XPS foam, uh, shape it a little bit, stick it down, leave it overnight so it'll go solid and then that will give me a base to work on. I can start thinking about all the balsa wood piles and woodwork and stuff that's going to fit in. I'm also going to need to find a couple of suitable gladiator type figures to make sure this thing is actually big enough to make it worthwhile. Um, so um, I think you, if you're one of my regular viewers, um, you've probably seen me cut hardboard and XPS foam before. Certainly to do this kind of thing. Uh, you know, in one of the other Ben Fiat builds. Recently, I've done several. If you are new to this channel, and this is the first of my Ben Fiat builds, why don't you press pause and go and watch some of the others? You know, go and look at the batch build that I did recently. Uh, that will show you how I cut up hardboard and XPS foam real well. Otherwise, I'll see you in a moment. Well, probably tomorrow because it's got a cut out and stick and that kind of thing but it won't well it won't be tomorrow in the video will it it'll be like in about uh, 15 seconds time but you know it will be tomorrow for me or maybe a few days time oh i don't know see you tomorrow right knife do it do it okay then so one of my favorite models in the uh, b and b range for conversion at any rate is this brilliant um badger slave he comes with a little slave driving shrew but actually whoops i've converted into this figure a couple of times different ones this guy is my pit fighter brutus the butcher nasty nasty meat cleaver armor made of other people's fallen shields spikes on his head which i've done with uh, of other chaos spiky bits and and green stuff bridle he's a very effective looking fella this pit is being made i think for him uh, uh to welcome all comers so the base of the pit has got to be big enough to be able to get a combat in and might be the kind of thing that we get to use uh michael love joys dueling rules uh, that are in the Warren Percy affair. Don't know. Anyway, this is the um, island. There's enough room just about for a fighting thing. It's going to be rough. It's not going to be even floor. There are going to be weeds sticking up in places and we're going to have this build this structure up around it, which has got to be big enough, but anything else, to get my hand inside as well. That's another factor that I've got to build in. It's got to make it actually playable. So that's what we've got to go for now um and brutus is going to be around i'm going to need a couple of other figures i think just to kind of help me out um nearly finished little kind of witch hunting mouse with a big pitchfork that'd be quite cool to take on brutus the butcher i think 
that kind of thing. So, right, let's have a think about what we're going to use to actually make this model with. The, um, before I start digging around with balsa wood, uh, I've decided I'm going to use some of these. These, uh, if you saw the lighthouse build, are also part of this, this strange um, terrarium piece of kit that I bought kind of second hand. It was actually for, for uh, turtles, terrapins to crawl out the water on that kind of thing. It looks like some decking. But these are cool because they all look like masks. Look, I mean, it actually look it's got proper kind of wood grain cut into it, which is pretty cool. And then it looks like it's completely surrounded by rope, which is quite nice. I will have to chop the bottoms off, mind you, to get a better adhesion to the board. But I'm going to use two or three of these, big fat ones, um, which will make the basis of... And then these are mast extenders which I'm also going to use probably to make other piles that I can then start adding um, the woodwork to. So it's a bit of a cheat, a bit of a getaway and what I might do actually, because I bought this one second hand, uh, I'll see if I can find a uh, see if I can find exactly what it is and kind of like stick a link to it at the bottom so you can see where it came from. I don't know how much it should have cost originally but it kind of cost me about eight quid I think it was and uh, it was worth that just for the the tall tower mast on the lighthouse let alone providing stuff for this model so um, that's pretty neat if I could find it I might buy myself another one because it could become a real integral part of making other bits of Benfield. up anyway so I'm going to take a, a knife first of all I think and try and cut that off uh, stick them in place stick these little ones in place they will need some filling and that kind of thing because the holes you know are open and all the rest of it but that's not too tricky then I can start working on the lower level of my uh, fighting pit I'm gonna have to do the water and the uh, texture on the island pretty early on mind you so uh, um, before I start building walls, I'll put the piles in and then I'll have to add water, I think. Right. I think it's going to be quite an interesting looking model. Again, I don't think it's going to be particularly practical. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to make this kind of cool. Okay, so I've got this far. Stuck my six piles in place uh, using Yoohoo, all-purpose adhesive. They're still a bit wobbly, so I can't go manoeuvring this around a lot. Very soon, I will need to texture the island and put the water on. Uh, but this glue has got to go off completely, so that's probably going to be a job for tomorrow. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, I think, is um, start cutting some uh, boards to go from pile to pile to hold some of this into place. Uh, or probably actually some joists here to here. I don't want to lose this really nice grain effect here, but I do want to start giving this a bit more structure and holding it together. So I think I've got to find some square or rectangular section balsa and put in some beams in between each one of these. That will start to give it structure. Conveniently, the height of this is the same as the height here which means this is where I'm going to have my viewing platform, I think, looking down into the fighting pit. It'll be kind of like that height. So that will also be something to go on. But I can't put too much on the sides because I need to be able to work with this to get my hands in here. I can't put too much around the sides yet and start building the main structure because I want to be able to get my hands in here and work in here and put the details in um, and sand it and all the rest of it. Uh... Oh, but then I need to work on viewing platforms and the like. And the viewing platforms need to jut out a fair amount or have steps down or something to take them to the different heights of the other models. Um, they're going to have to have lower, a lower jetty possibly here. And then steps up. That would look quite cool. Um, and what that would do is, and possibly round over the back here as well. Um, and that way there, there are ways up and down and means you get access from different levels of other models on the table. Because what I haven't done is gone and got any other models out to kind of put alongside it to see how they work. Um, so yeah, balsa wood, square or rectangular section is what we need now. Right, so now I've got six beams in all the way around 
Uh, it's quite cool because it is hexagonal, which is good, but it's not regular like the uh, lighthouse, which is quite neat because they've put the piles in wherever. So each beam is cut differently, and the angles are all a bit wobbly, which is great. Oh, we give it that bit more of a rough and ready look. I haven't said it yet in this video. This is going to be a bit whimsical. I mean, dark and grim and whimsical, but whimsical nonetheless. There you go, that's three. Three shots you've got to go for if you're playing along with the Magathir Builder of Worlds drinking game. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, certainly I'm going for a bit more kind of fantasy feel for this again. The next thing I'm now doing is I've taken some slate from the garden. And I am adding some uh, rock around the outside of this first floor before I sand the uh, main part of the island and then add water that way there we get a bit of uh, interesting texture um, of course gotta be fairly careful with... I want to attach these pretty well to start off with so I'm using all purpose adhesive on the slate where I can but of course the problem with slate no, the problem with all the problem with the all-purpose adhesive, of course, is the fact that it will make the poly, make, melt the polystyrene. So I am going to have to use woodworking glue in most places, I think. But by putting the slate on, that's going to give some interesting textures to paint, rather than all just sand and mud, um, which is what I want actually most of the island to be. Uh, I want the idea of these these gladiators slipping and sliding in the mud and that kind of thing. Okay, so now I've got my sanded tray out. Uh, you can see several bits of slate in place and some other pebbles from the garden. Now I'm going to use um, this white gravel that I have, which is from the uh, fish shop and aquarium store. That's going to add quite a lot of kind of like rough gravel to this around the base here, this column. Uh, I'm just pouring it roughly over. It's a matter if I'm not very accurate right now. Uh, that's going to go all on the model. Uh, in a minute I'll lift it off. And I'll start to add coral sand. Which will fill in between the gravel. Go fairly careful when you're doing this, otherwise you do lose your stones as well. So here we are. See, so I only have one fall off, which isn't too bad. Take that as a win. Now, can I add that lot to my cold sand mix? Really, I just need to let this lot dry now. So from the top now you can see that I've got a fair amount of gravel um, and the slate and stone, which is not bad. I need to let that all go off. Then I'm going to sand all that pink stuff. Then from there I'll add water using a uh, multi-purpose filler. Then I'll be in the position to um, start to add all the boarding although what I might actually do is paint when that's all on I prime that and paint that I think certainly the inside of here because by the time I've added the superstructure and boarding and everything else can be really difficult to paint the on so um, yeah I'm gonna have to do this in stages and be very careful about thinking about what bit comes when right now this is the end of the first evening of this build Mm, what have we achieved? Well, I mean, say the end of the first evening, apart from the cutting out of the board and the foam, which I'm just doing. So, tonight we have lucked out and gone with our masts uh, to form the six points of the hexagon. We have. Um, made wooden beams between each mast, I've then done uh, supports for the beams off the big fat masts. We have added 
slate and pebbles to the foam core which has now gone off mostly and a small gravel from the pet store for shop and now I am mod podging the XPS foam which has two purposes first of all seal the foam so I'll be able to paint it spray it whatever secondly I added my podge all over it I'm going to be able to add coral sand which will give the texture which will make it easy to paint that's the last thing that's going to happen to this tonight because we really do need to let all the glues go off and drying out and these are good 12 hours or so of being left alone for all the all the glue to dry and go proper solid but it's looking quite a promising model this I'm quite enjoying it whimsical a bit fantasy I mean it's gonna look it's gonna look pretty cool I hope um, I want it to look weather beaten and worn and the shape will help with the whimsy uh, although I'm now going for of having I think invented a new term grim whimsy grim whim grim whim it's like grim dark but you know I want fantasy and whimsy cool fantasy but I want it to be miserable and horrible or at least all not kind of comfortable and twee bars and badgers I often describe as being similar to Wind of the Willows but Wind of the Willows it's a very comfortable anthropomorphic kind of thing and I want B and B to be a bit messier than that and generally rougher and tougher. Right, that's all the mud pods. <coughs> Let's find the sandbox. Sprinkle that sand. Need to get some new sand actually. This sand's getting more and more gravel in it, but that will work. Different grades. I want to get it in all the corners. It's going to give a really nice painted, paintable texture to the little island. When that's on, it certainly will prime. We're almost tempted. To have a go at painting it at this early stage. To get. Because the inside of the model is going to be hard to access. I want to do everything that I've got planned for it. Which mainly involves loads of weatherboarding around the outside. So the two combatants can't escape, but enough space around the outside for the water to come pouring in at high time. Well, there we go. One sanded model, wooden structures, mast, island under that. Let that dry overnight. Excellent, mission success so far. Right, so here is the uh, island with the sand on. You can see now I've got a really cool surface. It's going to paint up real nice. There's lots of different thicknesses where the glue was, and sand over stones and that kind of thing. So that's going to paint up real well. So now I need to add water around the base. I'm going to use multi-purpose polyfiller. Just squidge on, I'm going to brush out. And that'll add the water to take around the base of all these piles and up around the edge of the island as well. I think this is well, it's going to be different to every other piece of terrain in Benfield, and, and I hope that was going to make an interesting feature. Uh, so, from that point of view, when the water's done and dry, I'll then be able to, uh, I think, paint the bottom half of the model, certainly in here, and add details, and then I can start to put 
the planking on around the sides that keeps all the fight inside uh, whether I put the planks on the inside or the outside probably the outside to give just a bit more room to play but let's see what that looks like after we've done the water here we go with the multi-purpose polyfiller oh, I don't know if I've ever shown this before my method for this is um, squirt the polyfiller on and use a wet brush which is clearly got manky water and then wet down the polyfiller and kind of paint it on real thick use quite a lot of water to make the filler quite runny I tend to use the ready mix stuff it's just easier leave it in a tube Over the years, I've played with resins and all sorts of things, but this is going to be marsh water, and like everything else on all the other bases, uh, I want a bit of texture to it, and it's going to be greeny and bluey, and doesn't really need to be resin. The texture's more important, but nice thing about using filler like this, you can get a pretty smooth surface which will look watery especially when it's painted and then you just to give it that water sheen I just give it a coating of gloss mod podge to seal it there might be other techniques for doing water like this I don't know this is the way I've always done it if you know an, another technique something else I could try do give me a shout uh, this is cost effective cheap uh, always looks good. I'm always looking for new ideas though, so from that point of view. But it really is really simple. You just splurt on the polyfiller. He's just trying to get the polyfiller in the shot, not just his arm. There we go. And pretty much paints it on. I've used there are various different types over the years in actual fact I've always ended up just coming back to the all purpose it's the easiest to get hold of uh, some don't some flexible ones remain kind of sticky this goes good solid it will dry uh, in a few hours and uh, we'll be ready to paint I'm sure we'll look cracking so there we are, Tim adding water to a model. Here we go then, so that's the whole piece covered in filler. Um, there's the odd bit I might add a little bit extra to because I want to... I haven't quite got rid of some of the visible texture of the board underneath, but all I'm doing is reactivating some of the filler with water, spreading it around a little. What is kind of cool is you get this... Doing it this way you get... You don't get a really smooth finish. Uh, it's lumpy. The water smooths out the filler, but what you don't get is mill pool, a mill pool flatness. So it actually makes the water a little more dynamic and be more interesting to paint, I think. Because there are little waves and ripples coming in, which is kind of cool. So yeah, um, it's pretty good, I like that, around the bottom of all my piles with the rope. Try not to lose too much detail there, but certainly water there all round. And again, part of the model making process then is the drying time. I've got to leave this lot to dry, can't do anything else with it. Then I'll need to prime it. And uh, I think paint... I won't paint the water, I shouldn't imagine, but I will paint the island in there before I start cladding it, otherwise it might get too complicated. Right, time to dry. Right, so this is the first part of the build. I've painted this bit, I've primed this bit so I can paint it. Uh, because I think by the time I've got the rest of the structure on here, 
probably going to be too fiddly to get my hands in there to paint all these inner details. So I'm going <laughs> to paint some of that. I'll see how I go, but uh, I certainly want to paint the rocks and the islandy bit. I won't paint the water, I don't think, until I'm painting, doing the whole finished paint job. But I'm certainly going to paint the island and be able to get inside underneath all these timbers, which are going to be clad over with other timber. So um, it's going to be a very simple paint job. Um, using Mechanica standard grey and then working up other greys on the rocks and then Mournfang brown on loads of the uh, islandy bit um, we'll probably scatter a load of flock and do all those kind of details too um, so that's the next job to get this painted up and then I can get on with building up the sides of the fighting pit and the platforms that the viewers watch on and work out what the hell I'm going to do with these holes in the top of each one of these uh, piers as well but uh, they'll paint up real nice because they've got all these rope and wood effects on, so it's going to be pretty good. So, Monfang Brown here is a base dry bark, no, rhino, what's it called? Rhinox hide for the wood. Um, and using XV88 as the base colour for the rope. And they're going to be manky and grained and blurred down here because the water rises up and down so much. Got to show where the high water mark is. Right, let's um, find some big brushes and paint. Okay, so this is with most of the paint on. Um, I've flocked, as you can see, I've got Sterling Mud, or this is Sterling Battle Mar on here actually, which I'm going to paint over with Mod Podge Gloss to make it go sticky. Um, we've got a bunch of rushes at this end, uh, and various random clumps of, of grass that's grown up. I wasn't going to paint the water yet but I think actually what I'm going to do is paint the water uh, and cover that with my podge gloss as well so that can get wet um, and then I've got to build the structure around the base which is basically going to be nailed on planking um, which I'm very tempted to actually paint the majority of it before I stick it on so get some bits of bolts of the right thickness carve into it, paint it all black let it all dry cut it up into bits and I'm then going to stick on there um, and that way there I'm not making the rest of the main paint job even though I've got to work out what on earth then I'm doing up here with the the viewing platforms which need to, they're going to sit on this bit not too much because I need to be able to get hand round inside um, and hang over the back side a little bit as well um, and I still haven't worked out what I'm going to do to plug these holes I might just use I'd have put a wooden cap on the top of each one, which would be the most sensible thing. These little ones are going to be covered by the viewing platforms, but these top ones, uh, either some kind of wooden cap, or could even have a kind of canopy over the top. But then that stops the weather getting in, which kind of defeats the object. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's do the water. Right then. Most of the paint job on the bottom part is done. Uh, the Mod Podge covering made the mud all slimy, which is nice. The water's good. Dry area in the middle to fight. Um, now I've got to get on with the sides. The idea is very much that the combatants are kept inside the ring. So I think I'm going to just use bolts of planks, cut roughly across here, across the sides, different sides, so you can see in through the gaps. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, I'm almost tempted to paint a load of bolts first, black, and do the really messy parts of the painting before I get into chopping up and turn it into, um, into bolts. What I think I might do, because I want this to be, this, this fighting pit is where the tide goes up and down. The water goes up against it. It's not very well looked after. There's, I think what I'm going to do is to weather this bolsa going to use a wire brush um, to brush into all the bolts wood uh, and I get quite a lot prepare it brush it paint it um, and then cut planks to fit um, and then I'll work out how the um, viewing platforms are going to work I think so uh, what we do then I think with this wire brush let's check this out let's go down here zoom in on this piece of bolster that's um looks like about two three mil thick bolsters two mil but all i'm doing is taking my wire brush
and go backwards and forwards up and down the grain with it. Might not look much on, on camera, but what it's doing is giving it a, a rougher texture, getting rid of the nice smoothness of the balsa wood. And in some cases, if you press real hard, you dig into the balsa wood. going to give this wood a far rougher lived in kind of look when it's painted up you can see the wood coming off now on the on the workbench there and do both sides turn it over out of that that will pick up paint really nicely look really good you can see possibly on the end here still nice and smooth where it's been roughed up there so I'm gonna have to go at that again that's a bit better and on the other side as well I right, need to find more of this bolster wood do the same for that as well. It don't matter, you can be really rough with it in places if you like because it's supposed to be well weathered weatherboard. So you just about see all that cut into the grain. You won't really be able to appreciate that, I don't think, until it's painted. But it looks pretty neat. It looks a lot better than it did a few minutes ago when it was very smooth. Right, find more boxwood. Okay, as you can see, several pieces now done. Uh, several pieces of them collapsed and fell apart as I was doing it as well, which is fine because this rough splitting will look great on a plank. So from that point of view, not a problem. I'm going to find some Winsor & Newton black acrylic paint now, I think, and undercoat these, apply them on both sides, and then I can cut them into planks. All right, so this is going quite well at the minute. This is kind of like the, the boarding that I'm putting around the um, outside of the fighting pit. Yeah, there will still be a few more up here to kind of like stop the the combatants climbing out, but um, there's going to be other structures on here as well. And I'll be sticking this on with super glue, which means I'm going to have to go back over some of this because don't know that shows there the super glue has reacted with the paint and it's all gone kind of like made a uh, white reactive mess. But otherwise, it looks quite good. I'm I'm literally tearing the ends of the planks, um, and uh, I'm sticking them on in a kind of like a rough and ready kind of manner um i don't want it all to be nice and neat and tidy i want these planks banged up and held in with nails and that kind of thing so it looks rough and repaired and and yeah it's coming on so i've got to do these two sides here and then work out um start thinking about the, the upper level where the viewing platform is going to be i want at least one set of steps or something down here to some kind of platform jetty type thing which other wooden walkways are going to lead to. So I'd really like one on either side. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to work yet, though. Purely so I can link it into other bits of the uh, the, the scenery. Um, so the people of the beasts of Benfliot can walk from different directions to see the fights. Uh, that's where we're at anyway. So, um, yeah, next bit. Carry on. These bits here. Black planks, black planks. Nice. I've got some nine millimeter uh, bolts of square section here. That I've cut into uh, piles like this. That I'm now adding. I'm going to add a, a platform over here, um, which is roughly at the height. It's still a bit high compared to some of my jetties. But well, that's fine, but that means I'll be able to bring jetties right up to kind of uh, the edge of the model. Probably, actually, you might. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this platform like that. Um, I'll bring it right across there. 
to to run so that Jay can come in there I think triangle kind of thing triangle platform and then I'm going to cut platforms that fit in around the top yeah I'm not I'm not too sure how this bit is going to work out yet but I'm kind of making this up really as I go along but um, I'm going to do that first of all we're going to work out this kind of platform up here um, but my most of my jetties are still quite short uh, we'll see I'll be able to bring a jetty up against it and then a step up I think got to be the easiest way to do it yeah uh, so let's stick those on. Kind of sticking a bit, painting a bit. That's the best way to make it work, I think, in a minute. Ah, oh, this bit's really fiddly. Ah, oh, I don't know how to do it. Oh, I can't work out. I'm having issues. Look, I've done this bit, which is cool. Um, that's fine. There's my platform uh, to butt up with the walkways. I'm going to do one on the other side. I just can't. Work out how the bloody hell I'm going to do a decent viewing platform around the top. Mm, not worked it out yet. <laughs> hmm. Irritating. Oh, this is here we are. I'm not sure what to make of this model, to be quite honest, so far. It's kind of coming on. It'll be an interesting feature, I suppose, in the rest of it. I've now uh, uh, been flipped up. Uh, I've got a low platform here, which needs paint. Well, it all needs painting better, but I've then got a higher platform here so we can have jetties or, or things meeting in different places. I started to add more viewing platform so I can have figures stand around the top viewing what's going on uh, down in there. I'm also thinking of making this the slave market as well. This is where you're... Uh, you bring your slaves uh, and put them on sale and potential buyers come and stand out around the top and bid for slaves down in there. You know, because it won't be a fighting pit all the time, but it'll make quite a good slave market. I quite like it from that point of view. It's quite cool. So I think I'm leaving this bit open. This is where you put your slaves in, maybe. Uh, more your fighters. Um, although, it's another viewing platform. People could stand on here and watch the fights going on down there. Pretty dangerous, though. Um, so, my well, job's left to do then. Put more viewing platforms around the sides, um, up here and over the back over here, I think, uh, so an audience can watch. And then chuck in some details. I want some weapons and things, kind of like maybe hanging on the on the poles and that kind of thing. I was thinking of having loads of spikes in here to stop the combatants climbing out, but I just thought actually that would just get bloody uncomfortable when you're putting your hands inside you'll always be catching your hands on them. old gamers like me remember the goblin spearman regiments from warhammer fantasy battle 4 and, and whatever else where you used to stick lean over a table and put your hands on them and be like ah, loads of goblins stuck in your hands so lots of spikes although it would look really cool would be completely unnecessary and a potential gay hazard when gaming so i might give that a miss um but yeah and the problem with burrows and badges is you can't even have loads of dead bodies in there because Getting body parts is really kind of difficult. Although I could hang some tails up, I suppose. I might be able to find some tails. But, um, yeah, Michael Lovejoy, if you're watching this, I'd like a set of animal skulls, please. Little resin cast animal skulls. That'll be quite a nice little um, stretch goal for the next Kickstarter, Mike. Yeah, yeah, some, some bits. Different skulls of different creatures. Like a little set. That'll be really, really neat. You know, a couple of rabbits ones, a couple of kind of like dog skulls. Uh, an otter skull, a cat skull, that kind of thing. So we could use them to to, to grim dark our scenery. Thank you very much. That'll be good. Right. Okay. So we're going to get on with um, the next bits then, which is uh, more bolster boarding. Excellent. Okay. See you in a minute. Okay. So now in the last stages of this build, really, to be quite honest, um, the actual main structure is now done. I mostly painted. Uh, the weathering could do with some weathering, I suppose, and I still haven't filled the holes. Um, I'm always at this, this point is always a bit of a struggle for me because I'm now at the point where, unless I'm careful, I could spend absolutely ages and ages and ages adding detail, doing too much. One of the things I thought about is adding handrails to the outside here and handrails to the inside here to stop 
beast to fall in or fall off the edge. Which might be quite cool. They would also be an absolute nightmare to store. Uh, and would constantly get caught and get in the way of figures and get things broken. So um, I don't think I'm going to add a handrails at all. Um, they're just going to get broken off too easily. So uh, to save me the grief, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I've got enough room now for massive beasts to stand and watch what's going on inside the fighting pit. I've got multiple layers, levels that we can watch the fights from. Uh, one here, a high one up here. I can bring boats alongside, I can put jetties along it. So what I'm now going to do is spend a little while, not very long, <coughs> adding some details inside and out to sell it as what it is. So weapons and shields and things stuck up on the on the pillars and the like because it's a fighting pit. Um uh, some banners, I think. Uh maybe even the old poster. But we're nearly nearly finished. Alright, okay, so here we are. Um painting details. There's a banner for my badger warrior, Brutus the Butcher. That's gonna be hanging up. Um Somewhere around here I've got Pit Fights Banner. There we go. Pit Fights, that's going on. And I've got shields and weapons to add. And then I'm going to add to the woodwork a whole load of washes. Greens and browns and make it wet and manky and that kind of thing. Need some weathering. Um, apart from that, I'm nearly, nearly there. Should get this done tonight, I hope. Fingers crossed. And tonight's viewing pleasure while we're watching is season one of The Last Kingdom, where I'll try not to get cross at the clothes and some of the stupid history, like what the feck is that lass wearing to cover her face up, for God's sake. Oh, never mind. Don't get cross at history. Don't get cross at history dramas. Just get, I mean, it's great to the cool one, but fuck's sake. Of course, this is a fighting pit, so it would not be complete unless I apply blood for the blood god. Actually, it'd be quite cool because this is good stuff. If if you've never used this, it's a Citadel technical paint. I'll move it around so you can't look at it properly. How annoying is that? Uh, and this is going to leave gooey red glue, goo, blood, gooey stuff, and I'm going to put it over the stones in a couple of different places in the in the middle of the pit because then it'll look pretty effective, and probably up some of the walls too. I'm going to splatter it around. There you go then, that is uh, my finished fighting pit for Benfliop. You'll have to forgive the rain on the roof this evening. I've spent it all evening thinking oh, I must go out and film this last bit of this video and it hasn't been raining at all. And as soon as I came out to the workshop, it started to rain. Anyway, this is it, this is the done thing, it's finished. I've got details on it um, and, and figures inside. I'm really quite pleased with this. Um, Oh, I'll say this a couple of times just to get the, the count up. Um, yeah, it's kind of whimsical. Not kind of nice fantasy whimsical like the uh, um, Lighthouse was in that kind of way. This is, I'm hoping, a bit more gritty and whimsical. Yeah, that's three shots. Go for it. Um, uh, it was a challenge. It was a real challenge. Let's just um, take some of these off. Um, the challenge came, apart from anything else, with the fact that I wanted to make it an asymmetrical kind of thing I wanted to look organic and and not really neat and tidy like some other buildings are in some of my models um, so the hexagon the hexagonal bit up here um, is not regular hexagon like the the lighthouse um, it's a bit of a mishmash and that meant actually that doing the, the viewing platforms was very awkward but there are bits missing and bits chopped out and um, actually that kind of works for me in many ways uh, because it looks a bit more organic and haphazard. I've made some definite de design choices. I have not put handrails on the back, on the outside or on the inside to stop characters falling off. Um, 
I've done that because uh, for ease of access during play, actually getting bases on there. The problem with um, Burrows and Badgers is massive beasts like Brutus the Butcher come on 50 millimeter bases. They're huge compared to a lot of wargaming game uh, uh, figures. So at least with that, it means the bases could hang over the edge and don't get in the way. And the other thing is, is I'm pretty sure that the handrails they'll be very fragile. And uh, they'll break pretty easy. And, and to save my hair going grey and my beard falling out, I decided to do away with them in the first place and not even bother actually putting them on the model. We've added uh, uh, a bunch of details in how quite like. Um, you might be able to see the, uh, the blood splatter. Um, in fact, I've just noticed there's some blood splatter underneath some of the barriers. Um, there are... Uh, Banners hanging up pit fights and one to advertise that this is the home of Brutus the Butcher. We've got a number of different shields on the different piles. They are inside the model in different places. Um, an old cartwheel in one place and bits of a lizard skin in another place. And there's even a set of spikes on this pillar, uh, uh, pillar over here. Although I haven't done it all the way around uh, for reasons discussed earlier. There are weapons on the floor, discarded pole arms and shields. Enough to give it a flavour, but uh, not too much to get in the way of the actual uh, models when they're used or gameplay. How this is going to work in a game, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to have to write some scenarios that are based around it. And like I said, I, I did actually kind of fancy you maybe using the dueling. Um, rules that Michael Lovejoy has written for B&B. &B. This is this is the home of Brutus the Butcher, uh, and I, I do like the idea of him taking on the tri tiny shrew Zerker, which is an early figure for the range. is really great. It's a shrew with a bloody great big double-handed axe. Um, although it's a great big double-handed axe for a shrew, but actually it's kind of like only a little hand axe for Brutus the Butcher. But um, a real David and Goliath uh, kind of like fight to go on in the arena. Now, at this point, I'd normally get kind of excited because I'd be putting this on a, a table um, with other elements of, of the scenery so you can see how it all goes. Now, I'm going to apologise in advance because that is not going to happen in this video. I've done some stuff. You'll see some arty stuff in a minute. But nothing on a table at the minute because my house is in complete uproar at the moment. We've got builders in. We're turning our living room into a kitchen. And then later in the summer, we're going to have a whole load of other building work done. And subsequently, the workshop is full of boxes uh, of stuff that's been moved out of the house. And I've got no space at all um, to get all the Benfield stuff out. So for those of you who are hoping to see this on the table, I'm really, really sorry. But in the near future, not too far away, I am hoping to get out a whole 8 foot by 4 foot Benfield table and film a whole load of stuff on it. So uh, wait and see what happens there. I do have some more Benfield builds uh, in mind. Um, very soon I'm going to uh, do a, a ship conversion using a Playmobil pirate ship. Um, watch out for that video. I don't know if that's going to be happening immediately uh, because... Uh, our way from Burrows and Badgers I've also got a Patreon build to get on with and it's worth pointing out here that this Patreon build is going to take us back to Necromunda um, but of course because everybody's into it right now out into the ash wastes I'll make more of an announcement about that fairly soon but there is a uh, uh, back in the world of B&B &B and in Benfliot um, having made my a beaver conversion, my Benfiot priest. Check him out here. What do you mean didn't see that video? Come on, it was only last week. It was me converting a, a resin figure. Go and look at it now. It's the video. It's the last one. Well, it's not the last one. The last one was me sticking a skeleton in the chimney. Haven't seen that one. Go and check that out. It's only a minute and a half long. But the last actual modelling thing I did was converting this guy. And he now needs a temple. And with conversations with Ted, they're definitely on some kind of dam because it's a beaver. So that's going to be a largish build for Benfleet. I'm going to quite enjoy that. Um, that will involve XPS foam and, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. 
and Bolton work and that kind of thing. So uh, in the near future then coming up, we're going to have a, a Burrows and Badgers ship conversion video. We're going to have a Burrows and Badgers uh, temple, sea marsh temple to the, the god Mananananananananan. -an and there is going to be definitely a Patreon Ash Wastes Necromunda build because it's going to be really cool. Um, it's going to involve this. So, um, if you want to make see any of those videos, then you need to make sure that you have clicked subscribe down below if you're one of my viewers already. Um, I'm about two months short of two years of running this channel, which astounds me. And I'm about 250 subscribers short of 5,000 subscribers, which would also be really cool. So I'd love, love, love to get to 5,000 subscribers by the time uh, this uh, channel is two years old. So, having said that, if you haven't subscribed already, click subscribe down below. If you are a subscriber, do me a massive favour, would you please, and share this video somewhere else and show it to people who haven't seen it before. Enlighten them with burrows and badges, or share my other videos with them as well, because I'd really, 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 really love to hit that 5,000 mark. It will be really great. Please do leave a comment down below about what you think about this model here, or what you'd like to see me build in the future, or what you think of burrows and badges because you picked it up because it's a really cool game and you're now part of our amazing growing community um, that would all be really really cool um, and if you would like to support this channel even more so don't forget I do have a Patreon uh, um, account over patreon.com slash worlds where you can join up for the price of a, a magazine each month uh, and support this channel in what I do and you could be the person who wins the next Patreon competition which is going to be run in the summer, in August, and you could be winning a piece of Magrathea Builder World's custom-built scenery just for you, just like the Ashway scenery I'm going to be making in the very near future. So, all that leads to say is uh, thank you very much for watching Magrathea Builder World. I'm going to show you some more nice close-up bits of this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.